This is the OnePlus Nord 5, this is Emily. This is the India variant, so it does have a larger battery. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a red rubber gasket around the opening. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hair dryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. The glass camera lens cover can be replaced by applying heat and prying it off. So you don't have to take apart the phone to replace that. However, if you are planning on replacing the camera bezel, there are three Phillips screws on the back which need to be removed. There are 17 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Taking a look at the top plastic motherboard cover, we can see the LED flash flex cable, the NFC antenna, as well as graphite foam top transfer heat. Here's a look at the back. The battery cables can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. The coaxial cables can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the main board. Taking a look at the main board, we see the 8 megapixel ultra wide lens and the 50 megapixel primary camera. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on the top corner, rubber gaskets around the connectors, as well as graphite film and copper tape over the shield to help transfer heat. Taking a look at the other side, we see the 50 megapixel front facing camera, the infrared or IR blaster, as well as additional copper tape and graphite film on the back, as well as thermal paste to help transfer heat. Once the graphite film has been peeled back, we see additional thermal paste on top of the RAM which is seated over the processor, as well as a thermal pad over the ROM or onboard storage, and this chip over here. Here's a better look with the thermal paste and thermal pad removed. To remove the battery, there is a pull pouch provided to help you pry it off. Here's a better look at the 6800 mAh battery, and do keep in mind this is larger than the global variant or version.
Once the plastic cover over the subboard has been removed, we can see the flex cable for the screen which is attached to the side of the subboard, as well as this flex cable assembly which connects the main board to the subboard. If you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws on the bottom subboard cover and the cover itself, you'd have to disconnect the flex cables and remove the subboard, giving you access to the flex cable for the screen, at which point you'd pull out the red rubber gasket by the screen cable, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, Pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, and reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. So taking a look at the subboard, we see rubber gaskets around the connectors, and these rubber gaskets help to prevent any debris or liquid from getting around the connectors. The primary microphone, which is underneath this covered shield, as well as the charger port, which has a red rubber gasket around it. The SIM reader is located on the other side. Here's a look at the bottom speaker assembly. There's a mesh filter over the speaker opening. The haptic feedback or vibrator motor is located here, which is held on with some adhesive, and the same goes for the fingerprint scanner located next to that. If you need to replace either of those, just apply some heat and gently pry them off. The vapor chamber isn't visible from this side, so it would require pying the screen off to show you that. So here's a look at the back of the screen once it's been pried off. And keep in mind prying off a working screen does pose a high chance of damaging it. We'll find out later on when I reassemble the phone if this screen still works. On the lower portion of the screen you can see the cutout on the screen for the fingerprint scanner, as well as the cutout for the front facing camera, and the ambient light and proximity sensor. Looking at the mid frame with the screen removed, we see another large area of graphite film to help transfer heat, and the vapor chamber is located underneath it. On top we can see the ambient light and proximity sensor. And here's a better look at the massive vapor chamber with the graphite film removed. The flex cable for the volume keys and power buttons located on this side. To replace that, just pull out the plastic bracket inside the frame, and then peel off and remove the flex cable. The proximity sensor board is located here, and the top earpiece speaker is located next to that, both of which are held on with some adhesive. To replace those, just apply some heat and pry them off. The flex cable for this button is located on this side, and the same goes for that flex cable which was on this side. Basically pull out the plastic bracket from inside the frame, and peel off and remove the flex cable. Now on this phone, when it comes to inserting the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, you don't need to worry since both the filters and the microphones are seated above the holes, so they wouldn't get damaged. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 6.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together.
Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back cover. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.